Oh. Nope. There we go. I got to be able to read. Uh, I'm going to basically here in a second, I'm going to read a, a call for unity uh, from the deacon body, but uh, figured it was important to go over a little bit of the background first to kind of let you know how this come about. I'm a little nervous. I usually ain't nervous up here. <laughs> uh, so I guess first, look, you probably need to know who the deacon body is because we kind of had some changes and growing and shrinking and back and forth. Uh, I'm chairman for this year uh, till October or so. My name is Bobby Eichler. Uh, got Wayne Tony up here in the front, Mike Newton, Sam Tucker, Dave Ayler, Matt Wall. Uh, I'm not sure if Tim is here today or not. I think he's working hurricane relief down in South Texas. Uh, and then uh, Dave Bennett, who is uh, with his son, bringing him back to college. So uh, with this, basically we had a meeting back, I think it was in the beginning of July, a deacon meeting. We came out of that deacon's meeting. Uh, I mean, it wasn't... We didn't have a whole lot of concern, but just the way the environment was kind of within the church, within the community, within the nation, all this uh, police brutality, COVID, church, there was just a lot going on. Uh, so we came out of that meeting, and uh, I got to thinking, I think on like a Monday and a Tuesday, about writing a call for unity, and I got home that Tuesday started writing, and about nine o'clock, another deacon called and said, hey, Brother Bob, what do you think about the deacons coming up with a, a, a statement on unity? I was like, well, it just so happened I just wrote one. So that's, I don't think that's coincidence. Uh, so from there, I basically got with other deacons kind of on a one-on-one uh, one -on -one basis, uh, they all agreed that it was good timing. We had no idea this uh, sermon series was coming up. Uh, we definitely don't check the sermons and the content. Uh, so the only thing I did was I ran this statement by just, uh, Pastor Justin and Pastor Steve. They told me, uh, basically, get with the deacons, and if it's a unanimous thing, that's probably, well, it is the Holy Spirit talking. Uh, they didn't write this. They didn't change any wording at all. So this is from the deacon body. Uh, so I firmly believe other than uh, writing this and speaking this, this is the Holy Spirit. So, uh, with that, I'll try to keep this short. It's probably going to be about a five-minute, five minute, six-minute. Uh, it's probably more than I wrote in a while. Uh, <laughs> I'm definitely not a preacher. This is the closest it'll ever be. So bear with me. So a call for unity. This statement was written in cooperation of the deacon body and brought forth solely by the deacon body. As deacons at First Baptist Church LaGrange, one of our main duties is to protect the unity of the church body. The bylaws of the church state that deacons are to zealously guard the unity of the spirit within the church and the bonds of peace. So that's one of our main duties. Unity, however, is responsibility of every member, not just leadership. Peter wrote, finally, all of you have unity in mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Church unity is a major subject in the Bible with many verses and several books specifically discuss the critical importance of unity. This call for unity is not meant to cause a concern within our church body. We are in good shape. This is not a cause for alarm. The intent is to bring awareness to the importance of church unity within these odd times that we as a society are going through. Over the past few years, it seems our church body has been through some stressful periods. Over a two to three year period, we lost a pastor of 11 to 12 years, a tornado destroyed <laughs> Two of our buildings, which were basically, all, they were pretty much complete when that tornado come through and took them down. Uh, we've had plenty of health issues and unexpected deaths, uh, which have touched many of our families. And now the latest is COVID. As any church body goes through, uh, as any church body goes through after a pastor leaves, 
there is a transition period. This transition period has been particularly trying for leadership to maneuver with the onset of the COVID pandemic. Uh, before COVID, during January and February of just this year, our Sunday, school, our Sunday attendance was running 200 to 240. And we had a thriving Wednesday evening time for our children and youth, thanks to our staff and many church members. Trying to manage through this COVID period is new territory, and we need to extend much grace to our leaders at every level. It seems there are no perfect solutions to the issues our church leadership faces on a daily basis. Despite some rough times, we do not want to paint uh, the past few years in a negative manner. We have had many positives. We rebuilt our facilities that were, uh, were destroyed by the tornado and improved upon them with basically no debt. Uh, we have moved to this new property and we started the building of our future worship center. As y'all can see, there's been a lot happened just since last Sunday. Uh, all this has happened within God's timeline and by his grace. We were led very well by, the past, by Pastor Justin during our time without a lead pastor. And in September 2019, we called Pastor Steve, who along with his family has been a blessing to our church. Amen. I personally feel that with these, hang in there, I'm about half done. Uh, I personally feel that with these times of stress, Satan has tried to creep into our church body. It's no secret is here, he is here to devour and to, and to destroy. While the idea of Satan creeping in is an area of deep concern, I assure you that if we were, not, if we were a stagnant church, Satan would not bother us. He would be thrilled. To the contrary, this church has great potential and great vision. Our leadership is determined, as well as our members, to grow the kingdom here in LaGrange. Satan hates this idea and will cause disruption wherever he can find a weak link. God has worked through our leaders and led them through some tough months. Over the past months, the deacons, whether as a group or individually, have spent time with Pastor Steve and Pastor Justin. There's no doubt they both have their hearts focused on God and bringing in the lost. Another duty, another duty listed for the deacon body in the bylaws is to lead the church in the achievement of her mission. The deacon body supports the vision of our pastors and staff and know that they are focused on the mission of the church. The deacon body stands wholeheartedly with the staff and commends them for their dedication and hearts for kingdom growth. Back to the topic of unity. The deacon body calls on each of us to vigorously protect the unity of this church body during these times. As a member of God's kingdom, protecting church unity is essential and actually a biblical mandate. Paul tells us that we are to consider others' needs before our own. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6 tells us, As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a worthy, I, live, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bonds of peace. There is one body and one Spirit. Just as you were called to one Hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. A church filled with, this, uh, with such people cannot help but have peace, unity, and harmony. The deacon body asks that each of you pray for your church body and our leaders. Please dedicate a designated time each day to pray specifically for unity and protection of our church body. Please grant grace and be merciful to our leaders as well as to one another. Recognize non-productive, harmful talk that plants seeds of dissension within the body and stay clear of it. Do your part to build one another up, not tear down. We are in a culture and a climate that is here to stay where promoting division seems to be the goal and civil discussion is rarely used. Whether it be where you stand on watching the NFL, wearing a mask, is COVID real, who will you vote for, or who is better, the Cowboys or the Texans? As a community of believers, we must work together, setting aside individual preferences while agreeing on the absolutes, so that with God's help, we can reach the lost and grow his kingdom. As Matthew stated in chapter 5, verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works <coughs> And glorify your Father in heaven. 
As you are in the community, remember that you are the light to the lost. Lastly, we know that through all things uh, are possible through Christ, and we know if God is with us, then who can be against us? Uh, from the deacon body, we thank you for your time, and have a blessed day. Amen. Amen. Hey, thank you, brother. That was wonderful. Hey, church, I wonder if you just stand your feet. I just want to call us to a time of prayer. I want to pray us out uh, very quickly. I want to say thank you for your time today. Our deacon body felt that that was incredibly important for you to hear what's happening in their world. And, uh, man, I think we can all go out of here united in Jesus. Amen. So let me pray. Father, I pray, God, now that you would bless the reading of your word. You bless, God, the anointed worship that we've had today. God, just keep us close to you and close with one another. God, I pray that a spirit of humility would just, God, exude from our lives and that we would love one another the way you loved us. Oh, Jesus, be big. Now take us out into the mission field where we'll go, be in your light, and let us help reach people with the good news of Jesus. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Go in God's peace.